So OpenAI just unloaded a slew of major announcements at Dev Day. And while the event is namely pointed at developers, there's some pretty major news, even if you aren't one. And also, you kind of are a developer now, or at least if you want to be. OK, let's dive in. So first up is the news that ChatGPT4 is now ChatGPT4 Turbo, which increases the context length from 16K to 128K. It's roughly about the size of a 300 page novel. GPT-4 Turbo will be integrated into ChatGPT, apparently starting today if you're on the Plus plan. Uh, of course, it rolls out slowly and like all things OpenAI, I will be the last to get it. But if you're on the developer side and you hang out in this part of the OpenAI website, you'll be happy to know that the new model actually costs less, uh, costing only one cent per 1,000 tokens. So better and cheaper? That's cool. Additionally, the knowledge cutoff has been updated to April of 2023, with Sam Altman promising that they would do better about keeping regular updates so, you know, the knowledge base doesn't get super far behind. To me, the biggest news to come out of this was GPTs, which allow you to create your own GPT in natural language without any knowledge of coding whatsoever. Altman showed this off in real time by creating a GPT agent that would help startup founders with their business. At one point during the presentation, it just created its own profile picture, which was kind of cool, actually. Alban then moved over to the Configure tab where he was able to give the agent further instructions and even upload the text of a speech that he had previously given to allow the agent to train on that. Previous to that, they showed off a few GPT integrations, one with Canva, in which you could prompt for an invitation to the Dev Day event that they were actually at. And what was kind of cool is that you could actually just click on one of the thumbnails and that would take you to Canva where you could further edit your invitation. One that actually really excited me was the fact that you can integrate in with Zapier and the 5,000 things that it actually does. But this would allow ChatGPT to have access to your calendar as well, which is really moving into the AI assistant that I think we've all really been dying for. Furthering on with that idea, depending on your level of comfort with allowing apps permissions, you could actually send messages to people through ChatGPT as well, as they did here, sending a message to Sam Altman. I mean, you probably won't send a message to Sam Altman, or maybe you will, I don't know. I I'm on his block list, so. Moving back over to non-integrated GPTs, you can either use them for your personal use or for your company use if you have an enterprise license, and you can have them set to either private or public. In the case of public, later this month, there will be a GPT store. Now, it isn't clear if you're actually selling your GPTs, though Altman did mention that there would be an aspect of revenue sharing to the most popular and helpful and useful GPTs on the store. Uh, it's unclear yet as to what that actually means or what that cut's going to look like. There was some talk about Whisper V3, which is their text-to-speech model. It's actually been integrated into the ChatGPT mobile version. I don't know if you guys have played around with it, but it's a lot of fun here. Let's give it a shot real quick. Hey, I'm doing a video right now about OpenAI's Dev Day, and we're talking about the text-to-speech models. Uh, would you like to say hi to everyone on YouTube? Absolutely. Hello to everyone watching on YouTube. I'm excited you're discussing OpenAI's Dev Day and exploring the text-to-speech models. I hope you find the conversation interesting and insightful. Have a great time with your video. The have a great time with your video does kind of make me laugh a little bit. It's like, thanks, mom. So along with all of this, you won't need to pick models anymore. Uh, ChatGPT will just be able to browse with Bing, create images in Dolly, or do advanced data analytics all from one window, which is pretty awesome. I also presume that with GPTs, the plugin store is now nuked. Some more stuff on the developer side, including the new JSON mode, which should allow for more accurate code, plus the API assistant, which would have built-in code interpreter and retrieval. Uh, in this case, showcased with asking what the top 10 things to do in Paris are, and then annotating that map with flags. This is all done without a lick of code. So funny enough, I was actually prepping a video in which we would build a video game with ChatGPT. Uh, this is all the code that was written. Now, this is Visual Studio. I don't know a thing about any of this. I had ChatGPT walk me through 
every step of this. The game, as you can see, was lightly based off of Missile Command. It's not really, actually, it's not lightly based. It is Missile Command. Um, and I am not very good at my own game. The game, as you can see, wasn't finished. The problem, of course, was that ChatGPT just kept running out of tokens and would keep spitting me out broken code. So I would have to constantly open up new sessions and refresh it on all that material. An interesting hack that I came up with was just bouncing the code back and forth between ChatGPT and Claude. And that seemed to be an interesting way of having it double check its own work. But now with ChatGPT4 Turbo, I think I can pretty much complete a game all in one session. So with all of the jokes leading up to today's event, saying that OpenAI was going to announce Skynet or like sentient AI, to me, what actually was announced is better. We're really at the point where you can build whatever you want to build, provided it you know fits within 300 pages. But still, you can get a lot done in 300 pages. So let me know in the comments what you thought about today's event. And more importantly, let me know what GBT you're planning on building. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.